there, join me today for some early morning beach photography. We're still away on holiday in Whitby and I've come this morning to a place called Sands End which is a little bit further along the coast. Now I intend to do some beach photography um, but it's very early in the morning, it's still five o'clock and it's pitch black outside which is why I'm filming from inside my car. The, the weather doesn't look absolutely great because there seems to be a hint of sea mist so I don't know what kind of sunrise I'm going to get but as I found out earlier this week when I didn't get up I missed out on some really quite good light so you've got to be here on location to get whatever nature throws at you so this morning I'm going to get onto the beach and I know that I'm really going to enjoy my photography. So it's not just random chance that I ended up at Sands End this morning. Um, there are two main reasons why I have come to this beach today. The first was because I checked my Tide app um, that I've got on my phone and I knew that it was going to be a fairly high tide but retreating. Um, that was one reason. The second reason was I've seen some shots of some groins, um, those are wooden posts that uh, break up the water that stick out and so I wanted the high tide because I want to try and get some slow shutter speed shots um, with the groins and the water going around them and when I got to the beach I couldn't see the groins because one it was too dark and the tide was very high but now the tide has started to retreat a little bit they've started to appear so I'm on my way over to them now. I've set the camera up looking down this row of groins. Um, at the moment, the settings are a shutter speed of four seconds with an F number of 14 and an ISO of 100. And that's given me quite a slow shutter speed. And what I'm trying to do is time um, the moment I press the shutter to when the water is swirling around the bottom of the groins to create some interesting patterns and with four seconds um, the water is getting smoothed out now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put the big stopper on uh, the front of the camera and really smooth out the water now just at the moment um, the the light is still a little bit low and I might end up getting too long of an exposure with a, the 10 stop filter on the front. So I might have to wait a little while, but I'm sure I won't have to wait very long. Now I've just tried some long exposure shots from higher up here on the beach and you can see that the waves are coming up this high but as they retreat the the sand just gets wet and it just looks silky and it doesn't really give the effect that I'm looking for so what I needed to do was wade a lot further out into the water that was breaking and take a shot there and that really then picked up the waves moving and created that foggy misty kind of effect around the bottom of the groins. Now at the moment the groins that I found out there weren't particularly spectacular and they were quite a long way under the water so I'm going to have to do a bit more of a search to find something that I like a little bit better. But while I was stood there in the water it did make me feel very very queasy as the water was moving under my feet it did make me feel like everything was falling over and I don't think I could have stayed there very long. One thing I want to make really clear is I'm absolutely no expert at this kind of photography but I want you to use that as an example to go and try something new. Now I've done a little bit of long exposure shots and I've had my big stopper for years and years 
but I really, really underuse it. Um, it's a very, very niche kind of photography, but I hope that you can see from the types of images that I'm getting this morning that it's really uh, very creative and very relaxing. Now you don't have to be an expert to have a go at this kind of thing because there's loads of tutorials online and hopefully this tutorial will give you a little bit of an idea about how to go about taking shots like I'm doing this morning. Setting up a big stopper shot can seem a little bit confusing, but there are some very easy steps to make it um, very straightforward. So the first thing to do is set up your camera with the composition you want without the big stopper on. That's quite important because once you put the big stop on the front, you're really not gonna be able to see, you're not gonna be able to focus. So it's gonna be very difficult to um, actually get what you want. So I've set up a composition here and I've got the exposure. Now it's important to make a note of the exposure without the big stopper first of all because then you need to do a conversion to find out what settings you need when you put the big stopper on the front. Now there are two ways of doing this, two simple ways. There's a little card that comes with the big stopper and that's got all the conversions on and there's also an app that you can download for free um, this is the Lee big stopper um, and so you can download the Lee app but basically that um, I'll show you this as a screenshot has two dials so you can dial in the shutter speed and that will tell you um, from the shutter speed you've got on the camera to the shutter speed you should have when you put your big stopper on the front so at the moment I've got a hundredth of a second, so if I dial that into the app, it will tell me that I need around about a 12 second exposure. So what I'll do now is I'll put the big stopper onto the front of the camera, and then I'll dial in the exposure of 12 seconds. There we go, that's 13, that's close enough. And then I'll take the shot. And what that will do then is it'll leave the shutter open for 12 seconds, the water will come in and out and it will go very misty and milky and we've got our big stopper shot. Now it might be that you want to get the shutter speed even longer. Now at the moment I've got the ISO on 640th because I needed a little bit higher for a previous shot but if I take the big stopper off again and take the ISO down to its lowest setting. I've now got a shutter speed of a 15th of a second. So if I look at my conversion chart now, I'm just gonna look at the piece of paper, the 15th of a second ends up giving me a one minute exposure. So with one minute's worth of um, exposure, that is really gonna make the water go very, very misty and very, very flat and really ethereal. Now, if all of those settings sound a little bit complicated, you can simplify it even further by using a 30th of a second on the back of the camera, and that translates to a 30 second exposure when you've got the big stopper on the front. Timing your shot to the right moment is really important if you wanna get that milky, misty quality underneath your subject. So at the moment, there's a wave coming in just here that is breaking with white foam. So as it comes underneath the groins, that is the moment to press the shutter just before it comes under. Now that wasn't a particularly a spectacular one. There's a better one coming in, but a bit of trial and error and getting that white bar of foam moving under the groins will give you that misty um, quality underneath because the shutter will drag that white out and it'll just look like clouds underneath the groins. Just at the moment where I've got the tripod set up, the sea is coming in and it's making the sand underneath quite unstable. So to stop the tripod legs sinking into the wet sand, what I've done is I've got some CDs. Now these are just blank CDs. Now we tend not to really use these anymore because everybody tends to use memory sticks and that kind of thing. So I've got loads of these blank CDs knocking about. But if you put these underneath the 
tripod legs, it stops them from sinking into the sand. Now I can't take credit for this tip, it comes from a certain Mr. Heaton. Thanks Tom. It's about an hour now after the sun has risen and so it's getting quite bright, probably a little bit too bright for these long exposure shots, but I hope I've given you some good ideas this morning. I've underexposed this shot on purpose so I'm in silhouette but I wanted you to see the shot here behind me that I've just spotted. I really like it. I like the way that this cloud bank here reflects the way that the, the sea is coming in and it creates quite a lot of symmetry and the way that the light is just popping out from behind this cloud and then reflecting down on the beach I think works really well so I'm looking forward to getting that back in the computer because it looks really nice on the back of the camera. Well, I hope you found that video useful. It's certainly a technique that I've not used a lot, so it's sharpened up one of my photographic skills, and I hope you've found out a few new things as well, and maybe given you some ideas about a technique that you could try. Now, when I got here to the beach this morning, I didn't know what to expect, but it does go to show that a little bit of planning does help. By getting here for the high tide, I've managed to get the, the water around these groins which have particularly come to photograph. So planning still is important. The weather didn't do what I expected it to do, but it turned out that it played into my favor and the misty, murky conditions actually did help with the photos that I got. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video this morning and maybe learned a few new techniques. If you have, let me know down below in the comments or nip over to my Instagram account, and that's at the Oakdown Photography. You can leave me a comment there, and you can also see lots of my pictures. Now, if you like what I do on the channel and want to help support me to make future content like this, you can also pop over to my Teespring store. There I've got a range of merchandise on offer, and there's a link for that down below in the description. But you don't have to spend any money at all to support the channel. You can do that simply by clicking like, subscribe, and the bell notifications, because that really helps the channel out and it makes sure that you don't miss out on any of my future content. Watch out for next week's video, that goes live on Sunday. In the meantime, you can go and check out this video just up here. But all that's left now is to say, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.